Today's story concerns a player known as Brandon Fisher or Moltranex in game. He's often regarded as one of the richest players, but despite this, he's not very well known, and this might be due in part to his abrupt disappearance in early 2015, which later came out to be related to him getting arrested and ultimately sentenced to 10 years in prison. Today I want to talk about his history in RuneScape, his achievements, and lead that into his eventual arrest and conviction. It's a sad and gruesome story that very much has two sides you have to consider when listening to. Hey, if you guys like my stuff, a like on the video means the world to me, it helps show it to more people. If you've been watching for a while, a subscription is even better, like 10% of people are subscribed. And don't forget to check out those RuneScape statues we're making, KBDs and Vorcasts are in stock right now. Link is in the description. So the thing about Moltrenix that you'll come to see is that he's an unreliable narrator and most of what we know about him and his early RuneScape days is his own word. That being said, I'll point out the inconsistencies as they show up. So the story goes like this. Brandon starts playing the game shortly after it was released in 2001. His original alias, KJ Slim Shady, can still be found on the original list of the first 2000 players. He says that during the Christmas event that happened in December of 2001, which also happened to drop now the most valuable item in all of RuneScape party hats, that his cousin took it upon himself to collect as many of them as possible and then later gave them to Brandon when he quit the game soon after. Brandon maintains that he also ended up quitting the game and didn't come back for many years, but upon eventually returning, he found that his stash of party hats had skyrocketed in price. See, in the screenshots that Moltrenix aka Brandon has posted about his wealth, you can see the bulk of it is made up of this party hat stash, along with his Christmas crackers and other rare items. And when people would ask him how he made his money, this is the explanation he would give, and then all the money he's made since then was done through merching. There's a couple flaws with this story that I want to point out, but we'll save it till after we examine the various images Brandon posted on his different social media pages of his in-game wealth. It's these images, along with a bunch of giveaways he was doing in his clan, that got him known for being extremely wealthy in RuneScape. So the first one that we're looking at here, he's using the in-game quick chat function to show the amount of gold his bank is worth, and he's doing this on three of his alts. The total amount here is 9 trillion GP. We've also got a few images of his party hat stash, which is just unbelievable. I'm going to break down exactly what this is worth today in both RuneScape 3 Gold and Old School RuneScape Gold to give you context. But one thing Brandon faced criticism for is that he would never actually show this wealth to anybody in game over the trade window, besides allegedly a few of his close friends. When people did ask him, he would give the excuse that all his stuff is spread out across many alternate accounts and he's not going to go and put it all together on one account to show them. He said that the only time he does that is when he's taking these quick chat pictures of his total wealth. So there's no proof that exists that he ever actually had this amount of gold or that amount of party hats. I did take a close look at all of these photos in Photoshop to see if I could determine if any of them are clearly doctored, but because of the Facebook image compression, it's just too hard to tell. The other criticism that people have with Brandon's story is that there's no link between him and the username KJ Slim Shady. The only reason why KJ Slim Shady is even known in Brandon's story is from his Wikipedia page, which one of his friends on Reddit alleges that he wrote himself in an attempt to legitimize his story. In fact, if you go back and look at the history of the Moltrenix Wikipedia page, you can see it has since been edited to remove all the information that there isn't proof of. On the original article that Brandon allegedly wrote himself, there's a claim that he was a player of Devious Mud, an early prototype that eventually evolved into RuneScape. The problem that I've seen many people have with this claim is that he would have only been 3 or 4 years old at that time. Now, just to show you, there's people on both sides of Moltrenix. Here we have his old best friend, SYK, vouching that he's seen 2 trillion GP personally in the trade window from Moltrenix. But then also, in the same Reddit thread about Moltrenix, we have another one of his alleged friends saying that the photo of the party hats which was posted here is fake and that Brandon has been lying to all his friends this whole time. Now, whether or not Brandon actually had Nine Trill or not, it is clear that he was a very wealthy player. You can see in November of 2014 that he donated 5.2 billion GP to the Well of Goodwill. This was a charity event that Jagex hosted back then, where every 10 million GP put into the well, they would donate $1 to charity. This put 
him at rank 3 for donations. Now, with respect to his quick chat showing a total wealth of 2 trillion GP, I saw a couple people posting in Reddit threads about him that they actually saw that in game, but there was speculation he was using some sort of quest item or some sort of mini game item that was way overvalued for how easy it was to obtain to artificially boost that total value quick chat. I think this is definitely a possibility. A famous YouTuber from back in the day, Omastardo, did a video showing off how overvalued Castle War items are in the game, and this was back in 2012, so this guy has 1,000 trickster helmets from Castle Wars, and the game valued those at a total of 100 billion GP, even though they're effectively worth nothing and you obtain them for free. But end of the day, there's no proof to prove one way or another that Moltrinix did or did not have this wealth. And if he did, it's crazy because the amount of GP that this is worth today has significantly skyrocketed because rares are worth so much more. I'm going to break down just the party hats. So I pulled the prices of rares from the official discontinue items thread on the RuneScape forums and if you haven't seen rare prices, they've skyrocketed especially in the last year. I mean some party hats here in RuneScape 3 gold are going for 30 to 50 to nearly 70 billion GP. And if you break that down into old school RuneScape gold, that's all the way from 5 billion up to 11 billion GP. I mean crackers are at 14 billion and so if you do all the math on the amount of party hats he showed in that image uh, he would have the equivalent of 3.3 trillion old school runescape GP or 20.13 trillion runescape 3 GP in just rares today. Now the thing is, we'll never know if Brandon Fisher actually has these items at least for a while because he's currently serving a 10 year sentence for one count of first degree assault and one count of second degree assault. On the night of February 15th, 2015, Brandon made a post on his RuneScape Facebook page saying goodbye my RuneScape friends, real life just threw a curveball, don't know if I'll ever be online again, don't bother asking what happened. Just shy of 15 minutes later on his personal Facebook page, he wrote, Sometimes good people do bad things. Sometimes people are just pushed past their breaking point. Just remember this. There's always two sides and things aren't what they seem. I'm sorry. I guess people were right about me. Thank you to all my amazing friends for everything you've done for me. I wouldn't have made it this far through all the shit without y'all. Then, about 40 minutes later, at 1.33 in the morning, we get another update from Brandon. He says, K, at a spot with free Wi-Fi. Let me clarify. I'm not quitting RuneScape. I'm simply losing my capability to play. I left my home, and RuneScape is the least of my concerns. I made this post so that all my very good friends here know at least something, other than me going completely quiet. And then finally, at 2.38 in the morning, we get the last update ever from Brandon. He writes, another rest stop, another comment, can't play RuneScape from jail. This is what his friends were left with until the first news reports came out. It turns out that on that same night, February 15th, 2015, at about 10 p.m., an hour and a half before he made the very first Facebook post saying goodbye, Brandon had assaulted his father in his bedroom with an aluminum bat. When his mother came to see what was going on, he assaulted her too. Both of them from the assault had serious head injuries. His mom had a broken arm and his father even lost his eye. It was at this point that Brandon fled from his home in Galloway, New York in his mother's car. He was eventually arrested in Buffalo, New York and while it's not mentioned in any of the reports, this is right next to the Canadian border. It's a four hour drive from Galloway to Buffalo, and it was during that time that he was stopping at various gas stations, using the free Wi-Fi, and making these posts on Facebook. Now, during his sentencing in 2016, he was 21 years old, 20 at the time of the assault. He said in court, I am far from perfect and I made a big mistake. I was traumatized by my crime and my first 10 months in jail I was angry and confused, trying to justify what I did in my mind. I used my time in jail to grow from a boy to a man. I have come a long way. Now, the assistant director attorney Charles Buka asked for the maximum sentence plus another 5 years for a jailhouse assault that Fisher admitted to committing against another inmate. He painted Fisher as a nonchalant, arrogant young man who manipulated his mother and sister. Now, despite this, his mother and sister actually went on record contradicting the prosecutor, saying that Brandon suffered years of abuse at the hands of his father and that he had autism. His sister said that before the night of the attack, Brandon's dad was extremely mad at him for hacking his phone and revealing that he had been having multiple affairs. She believes that Brandon came home on that night to get a jacket from the house when his father called him into the bedroom to continue scolding and criticizing him. That is what pushed Brandon over the edge into committing this assault. 
Now, despite this, the judge, James Murphy III, said that Brandon's crime was violent, vicious, and senseless, and that the attacks were bloody. He ordered Brandon to 10 years in prison, serving three years consecutively for his jailhouse assault and five years probation after he's released. His sister said, quote, My family has suffered enough. The physical injuries are nothing compared to the emotional ones. And that basically marks the end of Brandon's online journey. He's been radio silent on all of his social media pages, except one, but I'll talk about that, since being arrested. So that leads me to believe that he is indeed still serving the sentence out, and we probably aren't due to ever finding anything more out about Brandon until 2023 when he's set to be released. If he would even resurface publicly on the internet after everything that has happened. Now, his Twitter page has a couple active posts on it since his arrest in 2015. You can see here there's one on April 22nd of 2016, another in 2017, and then four in 2020. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think Brandon is at a prison, and I certainly don't think that he's out and that he has joined a old school RuneScape PKing clan that's known for hacking. Anyways, thank you guys all so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for 60,000 subscribers. I know that's coming. And don't forget about those RuneScape statues. Link is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video.